Today, I want to cover restlessness, anxiety, sleeping, and what to do. Hi there, welcome back. And uh, this is Firefighter Cafferata, and this is my uh, year process of going through my experience with my aortic aneurysm. Um, want to start off by saying thanks for joining me. And I'm not medical advice. I'm just telling you my experience and my story. So, so far, uh, we've talked about me kind of experiencing the whole discovery, right? And then I talked about the planning, organization. I talked about the emotional part, right? The emotional part. Um, that's the one that it, it drives uh, me through the roof, right? Um, things that we're supposed to do before we go through these things, right? Is you want to have a network of people to talk to. You want to have a good like uh, group that is your support group. Let it be whoever it might be, family, friends, somebody on the phone. Um, also, you want to have uh, your your calming source, right? Uh, a healthy outlet, right? I walk every day. I walk, I don't know, 10,000, uh, 15,000 steps, if not more a day. Uh, I have my kids that keep me busy. And that's also the thing that makes me the most worried and stressed. So you need to have a blood pressure cuff, right? So go order one of those. You can find them on Amazon. Um, I have a manual one, but a digital one will be easier when you're by yourself. Now, uh, the feeling of what's going on. Nanerism, they say it's asymptomatic, but the psychosomatic part of it is my body is going through so many, like, uh, so many crazy things that I'm stressing so deeply that that psychosomatic, the mental part of it, makes it feel like something's happening right now. Like, I went to the ER, I told you guys, but uh, out of fear of it was starting to dissect. Um, there's every moment of every day, it feels like there's like my, my heart is in my throat and I feel the pain and I try to like calm myself with music, with walking, with talking to myself and saying, you know, like calm down, you're going to be fine. Right. And it's good to do that too. So, uh, another thing is when I'm home and I'm by myself, like, you know, I want to keep busy. I want to do something that like doesn't make me just think about the negative. I just got off the phone. I was talking to uh, people I've worked with in the past. My network of, of positive, positive support, right? He's one of my chiefs from my previous organization who had also open heart surgery as well. I didn't know about. And so they're giving you positive feedback and some inspiration that you could overcome these things and you could overcome these things too. So you could find these networks of people on, um, even if you don't have immediately around you on sites like the Facebook sites, the Instagram sites, and all those different social outlets, you could find them. But the best ones are probably the ones that are closest to you because they know you. And uh, so my, the thing I want to talk about today is, is at night sleeping, right? I'm still trying to figure out like the best way to like turn off the worry and go to bed. I've asked my doctor, should I get a subscription of Xanax? Should I have something to, to ease me? Because melatonin is not putting me to sleep. I wake up every night at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and it's horrible. And you guys might be feeling the same way and doing the same thing, uh, you know, you want to just lower the blood pressure, also the heart rate, right? But looking at that, it's like, it's easy to say, hard to do. Like I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm up always like moving around and it feels like I'm so like agitated, aggravated, uh, that like I'm paying attention to everything on my watch. I have a Garmin and my Garmin watch is amazing and it helps. There's like the aura ring and all these different things you could do, but it tracks my sleep. And I look at my sleep every day and you notice my sleep patterns are horrible. I'm sleeping like six, uh, like six hours, but it's six hours of very light sleep with maybe one hour of deep sleep and about 20 minutes of REM sleep. Now sleep is one of the most critical things. So you have to figure uh, a way 
you know, when you guys talk to your doctor, what do you suggest I should do to sleep better? Because I'm doing this right now, I haven't heard back from my doctors, but reading up on melatonin, magnesium, right? In fact, I wanna to go to the store today, and maybe get some magnesium to kind of help my sleep. So I wanna see, and I'll, I'll touch base with you again once I take magnesium, but so far melatonin, not good, not doing anything. I take like 15 milligrams and I still wake up at three in the morning. I had a nightmare last night. Nightmare just was completely irrelevant of my aortic situation. It just was a nightmare, right? Because everybody has their weird dreams. I woke up and I was like, my I could tell my blood pressure was high, but my pulse was high. I didn't get my blood pressure cuff yet. And uh, it's, it's, it's annoying. I'm trying to get used to sleeping on my back. I'm trying to basically meditate myself to sleep. And that's the thing that you guys could do too, is like pick up a form of meditation. Not meditation necessarily of you stretching and doing yoga, but just like, like soothing, right? So I put on, I go to YouTube, I put on soothing sounds. And there's a million channels you could go to. I just look at the ones that have the most amount of like hits, where they have like millions and millions of people watching, and those are the ones I go to. If I like the sound, I put it on, I turn the phone like where the light is face down so it doesn't keep me awake, and I just like listen to it at a very low tone and hopefully it helps me sleep, right? Another thing you do is like, there's like Tibetan sounds. And, and like I'm just gonna say, because like tonight, I'm gonna try the Tibetan sounds where they have like, they go around like a, a like a copper, you know, uh, bowl and they kind of just, it's it just dings, makes noise. And I'm gonna try that tonight with magnesium. And I'll get back to you guys so you guys could see how that's gonna hopefully uh, work in, in hopefully my favor. So today is just about the fact of this is, you know, pre-surgery, the anxiety, the stress, talking to like therapists, talking to friends, trying to sleep at night. It is, it is challenging. Uh, I am constantly like spinning my wheels of like, what should I do? How can I make this better? And you know, ease this because um, it's hard. So, so far in my like the 30 odd days, I've actually had this knowledge of what's going on. I've had the CAT scan of the angiogram to find how big it is. I had the echocardiogram. Um, I went to the ER because I thought it was starting to dissect and I had another angiogram and they confirmed same size. So now tomorrow, I'm going to have a, a CT scan of my heart where they slow down the heart rate and they take an accurate picture to see if any type of vessels are blocked or there's any blockage. That's my next test. When you talk to your doctor, try to get every single test possible so you could rule out everything, but you could also find out specific details on what exactly is the issue because don't, don't just assume that it just might be one thing. It could be a multitude of things. So anyway, I'm going to leave you today with my video. Um, I appreciate you guys all watching. And I know that uh, my support is good. And I thank you guys. Hopefully this helps you in your journey. But right now this is my journey. And I just want to give you guys, um, you know, a, a two-week, a two-day-a-week update. So I usually come on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll be posting these. And uh, again, appreciate watching. Uh, join down below. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, email me and comment, and I will get back to you. Um, take care.